Hey everybody, I'm Scott Allen Miller and this is my life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today someone commented on the show that, and I'm doing a quick video today, it's a little bit too long for a short, but not enough to be a real episode, but I want to have this at the ready so that I can send it to people when they say this, because this is something that comes up a lot, and I'll explain why it comes up a lot real quickly. They said, you know, they were looking at Costa Rica, some other countries in the region, but Nicaragua and El Salvador are by far the safest. They're so safe, and yet they get a bad rap due to political instability. And this is unfair, and this is why. They're not politically unstable countries. That's a flat out lie. They're in fact both pretty stable. El Salvador has had some new major changes of government in the last half decade or so, but that doesn't make it unstable. It's just the normal dem democratic process. It's the same as if you called the United States unstable just because you know Obama won the election and then Trump won the election. That was not unstable. That's just the normal processes of democracy. The system was stable. Just you know, it swings from Democrat to Republican and back and back. And you know, it just does that. It's done it forever. We've never applied the term unstable to the United States for doing that. Same thing with El Salvador. You wouldn't call that unstable. Now their stability isn't as long lived as Nicaragua's. Nicaragua has been stable for uh, since its founding in 1979. There has been no real political instability during that entire time. There has been outside uh, uh, invaders trying to take over the country. We don't consider that unstable, right? The Ukraine is not unstable because Russia is attacking it, right? That's just not what that means. So that's Nicaragua has absolutely no political instability in its history and none going on. So that's a very, very strange thing to apply to a country that is the very definition of stable, at least within the region. And it is very clearly vastly more stable than the US or Canada, where everything in, that's going on in the country, every bit of news, everything that everyone is talking about, the reason that people are, that citizens are leaving those countries is due to political instability and the potential violence and collapse of society that people fear that could come from that. It's probably not really going to come from that. That's probably overblown fears, but it is driving people seriously enough to leave in massive droves. It is big political discourse currently about how many people are leaving those countries because of their political instability. I have to cut in while doing this episode. After I'd finished video recording the episode and while I was starting to work on editing it, while I was working on an episode about political stability, as I was working on an episode talking about how the U.S. is not stable and Nicaragua is stable, former President Donald Trump appears to have been shot uh, and, and appears to be okay at the time that I'm recording this, this has only been minutes, uh, appears to have been shot while at a rally. This is one, just a horrible piece of news from the United States, but also incredibly poignant that political stability differences. In Nicaragua, we never hear of violent attacks on political opponents. We never hear about people being threatened with guns. We don't have to worry about being shot for political views. And in the United States, as I'm making a recording, talking about how the United States is unstable and projects this unstable on, accuses other countries of the very instability that it has, one of the most dramatic examples of how unstable the United States is comes up as this happens, this, the timing for this could not possibly be more aligned. So while this is a tragic event and a, a terrible thing to be happening in any country that anyone is facing instability to this degree, it is important that we understand this is what instability would look like. The United States often accuses other countries of suppressing voices. But in the United States, suppression is the fear of being shot, the fear of repercussions, even if those repercussions aren't real, but often, as in this ex example, they clearly are. It's safe to assume that Donald Trump was shot because of his political views or potential political uh, activities, right? Is it possible that he was shot by someone who just doesn't like the color of his suit? Of course, that's a possibility, but we know that that's not reality, right? This is a politically motivated shooting, and it failed in this case, assuming that the goal was to kill him. But we have to recognize that stability, in order for a country to be stable, you can't be fearful of your neighbors. You can't be fearful of being shot uh, for your political activities. Of course, anywhere bad things can happen, 
but the level of fear, the amount of protection that the U.S. has to enact to keep this from happening on a regular basis, and it still happens from time to time, is a statement and something that we often overlook when we're talking about stability of other places, that the world looks at the United States as an unstable place for very good reasons, because the things that, that would highlight instability are what we see happening on a regular basis in the United States. So of course, because people in North America are facing such extreme political instability in their own countries, as I always say, they're going to project that, look for them blaming other countries for having that same problem because North Americans will believe it because they have that problem, why wouldn't others? So exactly what we're seeing, we see the United States claiming political instability in the most stable countries because one, it's what is going on in the United States, so it is a useful propaganda tool to apply to others, and people won't generally question it. Wow, it seems like a reasonable thing. It's going on other places. Why wouldn't it go on there? Why would I think I was being lied to? There's no trigger to tell you it's an unlikely truth, and that's valid. It's not likely to be a lie, except that the U.S. typically lies about other countries when they're reporting from the State Department, so you should always question it. So that should be a de facto don't trust what the State Department says. But this idea that it gets a bad rap from political instability would only make sense if political stability was seen as being a negative, because it's the most stable in the region. That makes no sense whatsoever. What it gets a bad rap for is misinformation. That's not the same as a bad rap for political instability. It doesn't have political instability, so it can't get a bad rap from that. It gets a bad rap because misinformation is applied about it. But it also requires another step. It requires people to think that political instability matters, and it just doesn't. And I'll give you the best example because I just used this on the, the comments, and I think this is fantastic. Imagine you're talking to someone, you're an American, and you're telling them about the great uh, things you can do in the United States, you know, as a tourist or maybe as an expat. And you're describing, for example, Disney World, which is pretty fantastic even for the U.S. Like, it really stands out as an amazing thing to do in the U.S. And you talk all about the rides and the food and the hotels and just the experience. It's really cool. You should come to Disney World. And they said, you know what? I'd love to. That sounds amazing. It's my dream. But, you know... Political instability. I heard that the other political party is going to be in the elections and they might win. So I don't think I can come to Disney World because it'll be, I don't know, scary because of political instability. And you would think they were out of their minds. That's insane. Right? The fact that the United States is going to have a vote does not indicate what sounds like scary political instability. That's just normal processes. And yes, the United States does, beyond that, have some political instability. There is a lot of scary stuff potentially going on. But it's mostly potentially going on, and even though it's the most unstable country in the region, still not scary in the general sense. And as a tourist, it's really, really not scary. If you're in the United States and some truly epic political instability came to fruition and it broke out into civil war, which would be terrifying for the citizens as a tourist, it's not the best day and it's a kind of terrible thing to have happen during your vacation. Trust me, I've had it happen, not in the US. I have had it happen to me. And you know what? We just hopped in our car and left. No big deal. I mean, it cut our, our plans short a little bit, but we had another country right next door. We just drove onto that and went there instead. Not a big deal. If political instability leads to something actually bad in the United States, as an example, and you're on vacation or you're an expat, either just recognize that it probably doesn't affect you and just go about your life as usual. But if it really did get to a point where it would affect you, then leave. Like, I understand cutting your vacation short sucks. That's not a positive. I'm not saying that political instability is a yay, yay, this is good for us thing. I'm just saying that it really doesn't matter. To an absurd degree, doesn't matter. It's kind of like, oh, I was visiting the United States, but it got really rainy and it ruined my plans. Oh, no, my life's over. Oh, wait, no, I can just leave or stay in my hotel and not go out in the rain if that's what I want to do. You've got options. It's not that bad. Like, it like these things just don't matter in the way that they're being portrayed. So that tells us something else. Not only is are we getting propaganda to try to make something that is one thing seem the exact opposite based on the behavior of the home country, but two, the entire concept that political instability could be used as a reason to make someone concerned about moving to a country shows desperation, 
What this tells us is that someone who is trying to discourage you from moving to or visiting a certain country, and it doesn't have to be Nicaragua, these terms are used all over the world for different countries, look them up, go check who they're saying this about, and then look into their actual politics, not, not misinformation politics, look into their actual on-the-ground politics, and ask yourself, why would someone stoop to such a pathetic level to try to scare you if they're one? Why, one, why are they trying to scare you when there's nothing to scare you about? What's their agenda? Clearly, they're not looking out for you. They're trying to manipulate you. So that's the first thing. You've got an enemy talking to you. Watch out for that. Two, why are they using something that if you stopped and thought about it, you'd say, why would I care about that? That can't possibly make me concerned about traveling or visiting a country. Something's wrong. And then three, if you did any research, you would say, wait a second, what do they mean it's unstable? It's as stable as you can reasonably get. Like no place is completely stable. No place is completely unstable. Maybe, you know, Yemen or something. But like you're really, really getting to extreme cases to come up with. Even, you know, Palestine isn't that unstable right now. Being invaded? Yes, but they're pretty stable for politically. You know? So like the idea that political stability matters in this way, really just, but when you look it up and say, wait, but this is super stable. It's so easy to check on that, that why would someone try to discourage you from going to a country using that? The only logical reason is because they have nothing to work with. Oh wait, it's cheap. Oh wait, the weather's nice. Oh wait, it's safe, really safe, safer than where you are now. In fact, if I started to explain how safe it is, you'd feel like you need to get on a plane and go there right now because you will start to feel scared where you are, not that you should, but when you realize how much safer other places are compared to where you live, often it's like, wait a second, it's not that I'm in danger while I travel, it's in danger when I stop. And that is often the case, certainly not always, but it is often the case that traveling takes you to safer places than where you live. You just may not realize it because the place you live keeps wanting to tell you that other places are scary because otherwise it makes them look bad. So they need to, All right? So you have to kind of internalize this and go, wait, the fact that someone is using fake, not just even if they were using real political in instability, that would still indicate desperation to try to discredit a place based on something meaningless, but that they do it for a place that is not politically unstable really indicates an absolute lack of actual concerns while having a mandate to manipulate your opinion of a place. So that of all things is the strongest statement I've ever heard about the U.S. State Department absolutely telling us that they believe Nicaragua is the safest place you could reasonably go. I'm not saying it's the number one, like you can't get better. It's not what they're saying. They're saying they've got nothing to complain about about Nicaragua. And so they're going to a blatant exposure that they believe that if they list anything else, it'll be torn apart as so fake so easily that they're resorting to this completely soft, disprovable or impossible to disprove thing called political stability, which doesn't even have a measurement. There's no way to define politically unstable. It doesn't mean anything in reality. We all have kind of an impression of it. It doesn't actually have a concrete thing you can point to and it doesn't have a concrete problem. If something is bad, then you want it to be unstable, right? If the United States government is not something you currently agree with, you would see instability as a positive. You would only see stability as a positive if you like the current government. So the concept of stability, be, and, and that's only if you're in the polity. And if you're a traveler, who, who could care? Only someone who is there for the purpose of manipulating the government, right? Someone who is there as a spy or as an instigator. Yes, they care because that's why they're there. In which case, you don't care if the place is safe. You don't care if it's unstable. You're the thing causing the instability. So this highlights the degree to which North American countries truly, fundamentally, internally believe beyond any doubt that Nicaragua is safe and a good place for you to travel They've told you, they just used a tone that made it sound like they were warning you, but their words told you beyond a shadow of a doubt that they believe at their very heart that Nicaragua is a good place. And use this information, apply it to other countries. Look at how the US and Canada speak about, describe other countries. You'll find it occurring over and over again, and you can learn a lot about what the US actually thinks from that. Thanks for joining me, like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, 
You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. And I'll see all of you tomorrow.